Welcome to the Junos SDK tour and demo. I've gone already ahead today and installed the Junos SDK on this system so I can show it to you. I did that using the Junos SDK installer. I'm going to quickly open it up here so you can see it's a graphical user interface base installer. You follow the steps that it presents you and select all the options that you want. I've already done it so I'm going to go ahead and close it for now. Of course as part of that you're going to have to install some prerequisite software. VBox or VMware Player and Eclipse so that you can run the IDE plugins. Now today I've got my VBE running inside of VMware Player. Now VBE is short for Virtual Build Environment. My VBE is basically a free BSD machine. It's virtually running inside of this VMware Player instance as an image of that operating system. Very similar to Juniper's own Junos build machines. FreeBSD 7.1 allows you to build all of your Junos SDK applications. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because I don't actually need to work with that interface. As of 2011, you can work with a graphical interface in Eclipse because we've got Eclipse plugins. So I'm going to go ahead now and open up Eclipse. Okay, bringing up Eclipse, you can see that this is my Junos SDK perspective. You can always select the perspective right here if you wanted to. You can see I've got Junos SDK. I can actually reset it. It shows you what it looks like by default. And you got this browser open up to the Junos SDK, juniper.net slash developer webpage over here. I'm going to go ahead and close it like I had it before, just so I have a little bit more real estate. Over here is the Sandbox Explorer on the left, which is initially empty because I don't have any sandboxes. Now, development sandbox projects are exactly how you build applications. Those are the context for your application code. To create one, you can use the button on the toolbar, step one of four in their workflow. Create a Junos SDK project asks you for the virtual build environment or VBE credentials. They're populated for me already. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and select to create one of the new development sandbox projects. Now, what it's going to ask you for here is to select a version of the Junos SDK. I've got several installed on my VBE today, so I'm going to select 11.1. .1. Next, I'm going to select any applications. These are sample applications, that is, that I want installed in my application project already. If you don't, you don't have any code to start from. I'm going to use JNX example today and I'm going to leave demo as the name of my development sandbox project. Go ahead and create that by hitting finish and over on the left in my sandbox explorer I now see demo showing up. Inside of there I got 11.1 .1. This is my backing sandbox, or in other words, API set in there. And in the source tree, well, that's where all my application source code is going to reside. Specifically, you're probably going to work mostly on programs and user interface extensions and a few things related to a package. I'm going to show you the program code today, which is under SBIN. And my program is called JNX Example D. Ends with a D because it's a daemon, runs as a background process. You got some C and .h files under there. Let me open up one of the .c files to show you some more features of the IDE user interface here. Scroll down to maybe some Junos SDK APIs like this one right here. And the first thing you notice as I mouse over it is that it brings up a tooltip. And I can scroll through this information in the tooltip. That's the same information that you'd find in the HTML documentation for the SDK. If I hold down control and mouse over an API, you can actually see that it highlights it for me, just kind of like a link on a web page. And if I click on that, well, it takes me to the API. And the way that it takes me to it is it opens up a new tab with that file that contains that. It's, in this case, Juno's kcom.h, and that's inside of the 11.1 .1 directory, which I had there. Now I'm going to close that down because I'm not going to show you any more of the API information there. Let me show you one more feature that you might take advantage of while you're coding. Let's say that you're writing um, some code. You're writing, let's say, Junos underscore KCOM, but you can't remember the rest of the API function name. Well, no worries. You hold down control and hit space and it brings up something called a context sensitive help menu for you. You've got all of these different things in here. You can have it tell you what the rest of the function name is and even tell you what the parameters should be for it. Of course you can jump to the documentation for that like I just showed you as well. Now since this is a sample application I'm not going to do any coding because everything's already done for me. So I'm not going to save any of those changes. I'm going to go on to step two of my workflow. For that I need to build this. Of course you got an application, you got some code, you got to build it to run it. I'm going to select 
the build configuration to show you this little wizard that shows up and I'm going to only build for the MTMX series or in other words specifically the i386 architecture. I'm going to be installing it on the M series today so that's the only one that makes sense. Alright, so while this is building what it's going to do is it's going to create some object directories where my binaries are going to reside and those are all going to be under the same project. There they are, they just showed up obj-i386. Under there you got sbin and then the program name jnx example d. There's my binary right there for example. Alright, so you can't actually run the binaries on this system natively. I'm running Windows today. You could also be running this on a Mac or Linux. You can't run your programs that are intended to run on Junos on those systems. You can't run them in the virtual build environment neither. You need to run them in actually Junos. Surprise, surprise, they're Junos applications, you need to run them in Junos. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> all right, so how do we actually get those applications running in Junos? Well, all Junos applications are delivered via Junos packages, and my sample application has a package for this. Of course, the package is called JNX Example, and it's going to be installed on that target architecture, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish. As this package is up, it's going to create yet another directory called chip, and that's where my package file will be. It's a .tgz file. You can actually see in the window down here in the console that it generated it. There's the file right there. Now, I can actually take this file and copy it to a router, and uh, I can do that. There's no problem. If I was a system administrator, uh, I would probably get this file from the developer and go off and install it separately. Now, if you're a developer, what you could do is you could come on to phase four of your workflow and hit this button right here, copy files to router, and have it copied, or maybe even by checking this box, installed directly on a router. I won't install it on a router. I'll do that separately. Let me go ahead and select the file and hit finish and this is going to copy it to the router so that it's ready to be installed when I meet you on the router and meet you in the CLI specifically for it. All right. Here I am on the CLI and I've got show version. What's that? Well basically that's just showing you that I've got a standard Junos load on here 11.1 .1, same version that I intended to build my application for. All right. At this point I've got the stuff on the router, I'm going to do a file list. You can see I've got several JNX example files there, but the one that I actually just copied is this one with the timestamp 0343. You can see if I jump back into Eclipse, for example, that it matches that same timestamp right there. All right. So how do we install this? Well, if I was a system administrator or a developer, I could do this the same way that I install all Juno software. Request system software add. That's the command that all operators are familiar with. And of course, you just specify the name of the package. All right, go ahead and press enter. And about a minute later, you're off to the races with this thing up and installed. All right, my package is finished installing now. And of course, while it was installing, one of the things that it did was checking that that certificate that was in there is actually valid. Part of that is checking the provider prefix of the certificate name, which for me is Juniper, might be ABC if you're from company ABC. If I jump into the configuration mode, for example, I can show you that whitelist that I was talking about that it validates those names against. If I do a show system providers, oops, show system extension providers, I mean, there we go. You can see all of the different providers that are listed here. I've got Juniper listed there, and that's the only one. But I might have more if I was installing software from several other providers on this device. All right, now to activate JNX Example D. JNX Example D, that's that program that was part of things. So it came in my package, but it's still not running. I need to set that up, and I can do that by configuring some data for it. Let's configure some dummy data for it. Let's do this. Configure foo value 5, foo bar, and that one can be value 6. All right, let's commit that to make it take some effect. Now, if I do a show JNX example, you can see that's the stuff that I've just gone and committed into the configuration. And when I was doing a set, for example, you can see that. JNX example would seamlessly extend the context sensitive help in my Junos user interface. I've got complete context sensitive help for all of the extensions that have been added. 
And if I exit the configuration mode and jump into the other operational mode, I can do show JNX example. And there's a command called show JNX example data. This is just another dummy command. All it does is spits out the data that it had loaded in the configuration. Not terribly interesting. It's just a sample coding application to get beginner developers started from somewhere. All right. So this application is definitely up and running now since it's answering operational commands. If you didn't believe me, you would need to do a show system processes. The show system processes command shows you all of the processes that are running on the device. And way down at the bottom of the list, you can see JNX example is running with port 61898. At this point, I want to jump back into Eclipse and show you some debugging before I wrap things up. But to do that, I need to attach to a live running process. That's the most interesting demo I can possibly think of. A little bit better than post-mortem debugging or attaching to a process that you've just started from scratch. Here's one that we actually started up in the router. To do that, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm just going to become root on the Unix shell and start GDB server. I'm going to do that on port 2345 let's say and I need to tell GDB server to attach to something and specifically I want it to attach to this process right there that's the one that's running great it says that it's attached and it's listening on port 2345 let's jump back into Eclipse and select our project if we right click there and go debug as debug configurations I can create a new debug configuration for this I'm gonna go ahead and find my binary there it is and for my debugger I'm going to select GDB server and for the connection I need to set that up to point to my device and that's my Junos device and there's my port number 2345 great everything should be ready for some basic debugging at this point let me go ahead and press debug and you can see what Eclipse wants to do it wants to take me into the debugging perspective which is fine I'm gonna let it at this point, it's basically attached to the process. If I jump back here, you can see that, hey, I've got remote debugging from host and then some IP address. That must be the IP address that I'm coming from. Let me go back into Eclipse and hit resume so that the application continues to run. I don't need it to break right away where it is. It's just sitting in a select loop because it's running as an event-driven application. So what can I do to make this demo interesting? Well, if I go back into the code, for example, into my Junos SDK perspective, I'm going to go into JNX example D, open up my UI.C file, and come to the function that handles the operational command for, let's say, this one right here, show JNX example data. My first line of code in here on line 133, I can double click there, and it creates that little blue dot, which is a breakpoint. Now if I go back into my debug perspective, you can see that it automatically created a breakpoint there as well. So at this point, I can actually try to issue the show JNX example data command, and it should break there. Now I can't do it from this window because as you can see, look at this, well I'm already running GDB server. So what I need to do is open up a second window into the device. So if I'm opening up a second window, I can just bring that up here on top of the other one. And it's again looking at the CLI, and I'm going to do a show JNX example data. There you go. What do you notice? Hey, Eclipse comes back to life saying that it's actually catching something. The reason why it's catching something is it's actually hitting the breakpoint at this point. Now if I jump back to my router, you see that show JNX example hasn't returned anything like it did last time. The reason for that is because it's stuck at a breakpoint. You can see that it's stuck right here. I'm going to let it resume, and that's of course going to come back and let everything flow back to the CLI and you see the result there. So that's the debugging demo. That's everything for the IDE workflow steps one through four. I hope this demo was very informative for you. Thank you very much for viewing. I'll see you next time.